Alice, what a nasty open bite you've got there. Strange thing is, she doesn't have any perifunctional habit. No thumb sucking, and thanks God, because she's 11. No pencil biting, no tongue trust, nor any other imaginable thing. While well, you might think the open bite can be caused by some hyperdivergency, and in fact, you were right. A simple way to assess the divergency of a patient is to extend the mandibular plane backward. And if the line passes inside the cranium, then the subject is hyperdivergent. If it passes on the cranium's border, it's normodivergent. And if it passes outside, it's hypodivergent. Alice is obviously hyperdivergent, but there's another thing you should worry about. And this is the very essence, the most important thing to assess when you make diagnosis of an open bite. So normally the best thing to do when treating hyperdivergent patients with an open bite is to intrude the upper posterior teeth with mini screws. And that posterior upper intrusion will cause an anterior rotation of the mandible that will tend to close the anterior open bite. If you instead try to close the open bite by extrusion of the upper incisors, there is a great risk of causing a gummy smile, which is pretty much the devil itself in the treatment of open bites. Alice, however, has a very peculiar smile display. The upper lip covers almost half of the upper incisor's clinical crown, and that is very, very bad for smile aesthetics. Thus, even though Alice is hyperdivergent, we better solve this open bite by anterior extrusion rather than posterior intrusion. This way we'll get, or at least that's the plan, full teeth display at smile. Let's see what happened. Of course, the most convenient way to extrude the upper incisors is through anterior vertical elastics. However, Alice presented kind of a second class occlusion and therefore we added a second class vector to those elastics. And we decided to make them run from upper laterals and canines to lower premolars. One of the things I hate the most while using second class elastics is their tendency to cause lower incisor proclination. I try to avoid this counter effect with more and more exotic methods every time, but with Alice I have chosen to place a simple metallic ligature on the lower arch. Also, take a look at how these elastics tend to cause arch constriction and negative torque on lateral segments when used on nickel titanium arch wires. To get back to a decent arch form and to a more normal torque on cuspids and premolars, we need to wait until we get to rectangular TMA arch wires, at least. Very compliant patient, very good result. As we corrected the second class, we switched to a more vertical elastics vector. You don't really want to solve the anterior open bite with vertical elastics and then just take them off immediately. That will relapse. After you got the desired incisor extrusion, make sure to keep the elastics on for another 3 or 4 months. End of the game. First class, normal overbite, alignment. But the most important thing is the macro aesthetic of the smile. Before we see the final result, make sure to subscribe to get new orthodontic videos every now and then. If you're willing to learn ortho, this could be the fun way. And here we are. Nope, you haven't suddenly gotten myopia. It's just a picture that's out of focus. I'm sorry for that. But I hope you can see the difference from the beginning. There's a lot more white in this smile. And you can see the gingival parables designing a nice teeth layout. And that's way more important than correcting the class 2. 
get in touch, subscribe, post a comment or a question, I'm here to help. And start treating your first cases. Ortho is easy, you just need to learn it.